Welcome to this new video in which we're going to walk through a solve of a Minesweeper puzzle. If you'd like to try the puzzle uh, before watching the video, then pause it now and click the link beneath the video. Okay, so when solving Minesweeper, the first thing we're going to do is place the blank squares around all the zeros. You can do that using our puzzle player by pressing, pressing X. So we mark all the X's in around the three zeros to demonstrate that they can't contain a mine. Now we're going to look for squares that must contain mines. So if we look up here at the top right, we have a one and only one square that's available for the mine. And that then also means the other two ones are complete because they're touching a mine. So we can mark the squares around those as blank. So just to remind you of the rules, diagonally touching squares count, as well as those that are adjacent. Now if we look at this three, then we have the same situation. We have three squares that are empty and three mines to place. So they must all contain a mine, and this three is the same again. It's got two mines, but it needs three. These are both taken already with a given digit, so it can't contain mines. That just leaves this square here, and so we can put a mine in there. Now, if we look at this two, then we have exactly the same situation. It needs two mines around it, and there's only two empty squares. So we can place them here and here. And often that's how you'll start a Minesweeper puzzle. You'll of course put all the X's in around the zeros and then you'll look for squares that must contain mines. Um, but as you progress with the solve of most Minesweeper puzzles, things will be a little more difficult and you'll have to cross-reference between uh, the numbers and the deductions that can help you make. So, okay, let's look at this one and three. So we know that only one of these four squares can contain a mine. And we notice that three of them are shared with this three. So this square, this square, and this square neighbor both the one and the three. And that's very typical of the sort of information you need to use to make progress in a mine through puzzle. So because we know that this highlighted three must have three neighbors containing mines, but we know these three are shared with one, then we know that only one of these can contain a mine. And therefore that only leaves two other places available. So we know that both of those two squares must contain a mine. And in fact, in the process that completes this two, so we can mark X's in all the other squares that neighbor the two. And now we only have one square left available for the third mine. So that must go here. And that of course completes our one. Now we can fill in the mines down here because they have to be placed to complete the three here. And over here, I've just seen that we have a two and two available squares. Okay, so we place those. Okay, now let's look at this four, which currently has just one placed. Um, and it shares with this two, three of the four blank squares around it. So clearly a maximum of two of these can contain a mine. And therefore, this means that this square must contain a mine. Now, looking at this four, it's got one to place, but it shares both of these with this four. And we know that at least one of these two must contain a mine. Therefore, this square down here cannot contain a mine. Now let's look at this 
three. So it's got two mines currently placed and it needs another. But again, using the cross referencing logic, we can see it shares all three of its neighbors with four. And this four has already got three mines placed. So it just needs one more. So that tells us that since one of these three squares must be a mine, that will complete the four. And we can't put a mine in this square here. And that now enables us to complete this four by placing a mine here. And this four now only has one other place available for its other mine, which we can place here. Now let's just do some checking. So this two has got both mines placed. So that becomes an X. This one has got its mine placed. So that becomes an X. Over here, this four has got one, two, three, four. And this three has got one, two, three. So this is empty. Looking at this two, it's only got one square available for its next mine. This three has got all three of its mines in place. So this must be an X. And now let's look at this two. So currently it has three squares in which we need to place two mines. But it shares quite a few neighbors with this two here, which already has one mine placed. So we know that only one of these squares can contain a mine because that will then complete this too. Therefore, this must be a mine, which completes this one. And so we can cross off these neighboring squares. Now we only have one option left for this two. That in turn completes this two. And we can put the X's in. Now, Let's look at the one in the top left. So what do we know about this one? Well, we know the mine must go here or here, but both of those also neighbor these ones. So since either this square or this square is a mine, then none of the other neighbors of those ones can contain a mine. Now let's look at this three. Well, we know that only one of these two squares can contain a mine because of the one here. And likewise, because of this one, we know that only one of these squares can contain a mine. And since it needs three mines around it and only one can go here and one here, then the third mine must go up here. And that then takes out this square. So now let's see if we can find out where the other two mines around this three must be placed. Okay, so let's consider what would happen if this square were to contain a mine. So let's just mark it. Then we can see that it satisfies this one, but also this one. And that would be crucial because if this one has its mine here, then that would mean these four squares must all be blank. And that means this one could never have a mine next to it. Therefore, that can't be a mine, and so it must be blank. Now, we know that one of these two squares contains a mine, and one of these two squares contained a mine. Well, it must be this one. We've just proved it. And therefore, that satisfies all of these ones. So we can place X's around here. And now this mine here enables us to rule out a mine here. And therefore, the final mine in the puzzle must be go here. Let's check the solution. Yep, all good. Okay, we hope you found that video useful. If you have any comments or feedback or ideas for other videos that you'd like to see, please just let us know. Thanks for watching.